Magic moment with the bells. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's a magic. Like. Staying next with him is a magic moment. Yeah, wait till I fart. <laughs> that's can gonna I, be. Can I keep it? That's gonna be test of your <laughs> devotion. <laughs> Allora, siamo di nuovo qui a Como con Mr. Ezad Rivic. How are you doing? Can't complain. Yeah? How's it going, the con? Great. Great. It's a beautiful city, beautiful weather, the show is nice and uh, nothing to complain about. That's, that's great. So, I have to admit to you, as I said to you before, that I, right now I'm a, I'm a bit nervous because you are my top artist there's no one okay. over, you over you and for me your your work on tour is mm -hmm. like let's say a watchman because there is a an after and before your tour with Jason Aaron so I have to ask you which kind of memories do you have of that uh, that run that work not much uh, <laughs> no here's the thing uh, however you see it the way I see it, it's a daily grind, you know? Yeah, I know. You have to do 20 pages a month, you have to do a cover, and I was probably most of the time doing some more covers for some other mm -hmm. books. So, uh, like, uh, let's put it this way, when you start doing it, you have to decide on some, like, creative decisions, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but once you're into it, it, it just needs to get done you know because yep. it's easy to come up with oh I'm gonna do this and that great mm -hmm. but then months later when you go and do it you just suffer through it <laughs> you know and so it's entirely different view <laughs> of, uh, of the thing they are both both relative relati uh, how can I say um, yeah, it's Real. relative. Yeah, uh, because uh, w what you get when you look at it and you read it and you enjoy it, it's one thing. What what I get is a totally different thing. I enjoy it when I start it, but then uh, once you started it properly, it's uh, it's down to discipline to yep. to, to finish it. You know. Yeah. And you, after Jason Aaron, you you also work with uh, uh, Jonathan Ekman. Yeah. And right now you are working with Kieran Gillen mm -hmm. on the Eternals. Yeah, plan. that's done. That's finished. That's finished. Yeah. It's only twelve numbers, is it? Yeah. Uh, they are continuing to use the characters in different series, so. and Kieran is still uh, writing that mm -hmm. stuff. But I'm done with my part of uh, okay. the saga. <laughs> okay. And. Again, what can you tell us about uh, the creative process, of course, from your point of view of the... Well, here's the thing. Uh, every writer you work with is uh, different, you know, like uh, they have their own personal style and stuff like that. And uh, let's say that uh, there's uh, uh, compatibility or non-compatibility with different okay. writers in the different aspects, you know. Because, for example, all of the people I worked with, and we did stuff that I like, mm -hmm. you know, because I worked with Jason, I love what we did, you know, with Thor. I worked with Hickman, and I love what we did with the, the stuff we did mm -hmm. together, you know. Uh, but all of them do some other stuff where I don't see myself okay. being good fit for okay. to, to work with them. So it's kind of like uh, if somebody does something that you might be a right person to do because you might do it better than somebody else okay you know uh so so it's like that with everybody like kieran he did a lot of books where i wouldn't be a right artist for that you know uh but when he wanted to do eternals it was kind of natural uh for him to want to work with me on that because uh, what i do kind of lends itself to that kind of material in mm -hmm. a certain way that he wanted you know okay so so i would say i was pretty good fit for that mm -hmm. uh but you know next fucking thing you know he does it's gonna be something totally different you know so yep. you know so it kind of depends uh, like uh everybody who does that stuff has a couple of different let's say faces you yep. know for different projects and 
it depends on where you kind of fit with the particular environment uh, uh, requirement mm -hmm. for for mm -hmm. for that stuff you know and i was thinking about that both tor and the eternals of course let's go of course the eternals in a different way are god or godlike characters like the characters in comic book let's say we can say that are that they are the new um, mythology of our days and what do well, you think about this that's that's what i'm trying to do like uh, i don't think of any of those as superhero books mm -hmm. i think of them as mythology books and that's mm -hmm. how i try to treat them you know uh i try to uh be realistic enough to 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 allow you to kind of get into it and perceive it as much as reality as possible mm -hmm. you know uh so i don't want to design too much of the stuff because to me that's kind of distracting that that kind of doesn't allow you to forget your reading the comic mm -hmm. you know and uh, then you know uh try to make them mythical enough which means removing uh, that from reality mm -hmm. you know a, as much as possible i mean obviously if characters are sitting in a bar drinking you know you got to do a bar and have them drink but you will choose your uh, shots mm -hmm. you know in such a way to to kind of not lose the mythical thing yep. and then you will extrapolate it with something that's not mythic mythical cool. so so you kind of perceive the difference okay mm -hmm. there's something different with this character compared to that character's one. you know stuff like that so it's it's about that to me on mm -hmm. those kind of projects and thinking about uh, previous eternal stuff mm -hmm. like of course the, the kirby stuff mm -hmm. Neil Gaiman uh, John Romita Jr stuff mm -hmm. um, if they did how much influenced your work you, during um, your work mm -hmm. on uh, the, the run and if maybe if the movie too influenced it personally I, I still don't get that movie mm, yeah I don't like it either mm. here's the thing like I never read Eternals okay you know so first time I got any idea of it was when we already made a deal to do the book then they send me PDFs of the stuff, mm -hmm. so I went for that. Uh, but the thing is really, I didn't read any of those books till the end. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, it's like, you want to get a hang of, okay, this is what this character is, this is what that character is, mm -hmm. you know, basics. But you don't really want to, since we didn't continue on uh, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on the work pretty much any stuff it was yeah. you know kind of restarting it yep there's no point in kind of getting into details mm -hmm. of that previous stuff so so i would say that uh, it was very minimal influence mm -hmm. uh, just because we were actually trying to do something different you know that's that's good and keeping talking about movies have you seen the last dune yeah yeah do you like it well it's uh, it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, there, there, there are two different conversation you, uh, conversations you can have about that. I'm a fan of a book, like I read it first time a long time ago, and then I read it a couple of times after. You know, there is a bunch of stuff that's important for that uh, universe. Let's say that's mm -hmm. not in movies, <laughs> and I don't think that it's gonna be possible. To, to 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 put it in the next uh, mm -hmm. half that they're yeah. doing you know so so obviously this film is going to be uh, you know very different to to what uh, the book is which is not a problem mm -hmm. as 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 it is it kind of works i don't think it's a masterpiece because uh, Let's put it this way. I have a problem with uh, Villeneuve, okay. you know, and the problem is uh, that uh, his movies are emotionally one note. You know, like okay. most of most of his stuff, uh, 
you know, there's almost no humor in it. Mm -hmm. Everything is very serious. And uh, there's pathos to that. And there's quality to it. And, and it's appropriate sometimes. Mm -hmm. But then in some other situations, I would like for it to be a bit more, you know, like uh, dynamic, in yep. a, you know, because uh, a bit, a bit more lighter, let's say. Yeah, yeah, because it's it can. Uh, let's put it this way: if if you if you add some humor to something, if you have some lightness, then when something bad happens, it's kind of more shocking, you know. Mm -hmm. It has more effect that yeah. way. Uh, so. In my opinion, he kind of like lacks that, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it, he's very consistent from movie to movie <laughs> with that thing. Where which I would guess some people don't mind that, mm -hmm. you know. So for them, he's uh, he's you know perfect director. Mm -hmm. I I have a kind of problem with it, especially in Dune, because you know Dune has a lot of different scenes uh, where where you need a lot of different uh, emotional states and stuff like mm -hmm. that you know his doesn't have that it's all kind of unified into everybody's morose constantly mm -hmm. you know whenever somebody speaks you know they're, they're like very serious it's like a flat like line just on a yeah I would say so in that regard the old movie David Lynch movie mm -hmm. is actually better because uh, there's you know there's you know just childish bravado mm -hmm. there's some humor there's some this and that obviously you know it lacks in some other mm -hmm. departments you know new movie definitely looks great but then the old movie had its own look mm -hmm. you know a new movie kind of looks much more like other move uh, mm -hmm. sci-fi movies you know it's in that regard too it's kind of like uh, it looks great but the style is, you know, kind of more similar to other stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, like uh, if, if they kind of tried to do the same thing that the old movie did, but with the new technology, mm -hmm. it would probably be more visually interesting, mm -hmm. I would say, at least to me. Now, I asked you about Dune because uh, I think that your, your art uh, would really fit good with the uh, Herbert stuff with the Herbert books uh, atmospheres wars is there a, maybe I guess because I'm influenced by that stuff you know have you ever thought to make a comic about Dune yes set in yes. the world of Dune yes yes actually I wanted to do a, a adaptation but back then there was no interested parties who would mm -hmm. uh, want to publish it uh. you know so that's that's how it is you know uh, uh, I wanted to do, I'm a big fan of uh, Isaac Asimov, you mm -hmm. know, and for years I was like, uh, you know, offering to publishers I was working with, uh, I want to do f Foundation, mm -hmm. you know. Now there's a TV show, Foundation, I don't know yep. how it does, Disney. is it any good? Uh, you know, but 15 years ago nobody was interested, you know. And now I couldn't bother, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> even if somebody approached me with that, I probably wouldn't take it. And what can you tell us about your next projects? Are you working on something? Well, we are preparing something. I'm actually writing something uh, yeah. shorter that I'm going to do in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. And there's preparation for something else a bit bigger mm -hmm. with the some of my previous collaborators and I'm gonna keep you guessing who mm -hmm. uh, who that is because uh, whenever Marvel decides to announce what uh, we're gonna do that's when uh, so it's work for Marvel yeah. yeah yeah so Mr. Ribic has been a yeah. huge pleasure to thank meet you very you. much Same here grazie mille e ci vediamo al prossimo anno come ciao